the Hello, Victoria. How are you? Hello, Nizam. Do, do I have that pronounce, pronunciation correct, Nizam? Yes. yes. Awesome. Yes. yes. Hello. I am wonderful. How are you? I'm fine, too. And thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to interview you on one of the most fascinating and also misunderstood subject, which is law of attraction. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you for giving me the opportunity to clear it up for, you know, for, for your audience. And, yes. you know, so and our I'm, friends here is Victoria, one of the pioneers in the field of law of attraction. So there is so much to share about her, uh, yet I'll keep very short and crisp. Uh, so Victoria is a worldwide leader in hypnotherapy, a best-selling author, international speaker, life success coach, and renowned authority on the law of attraction. So we are very lucky to directly talk to her and know more about law of attraction, her journey and uh, everything in a while. She has dedicated her life to empowering people all over the world to successfully live a life of liberty aligned with their dreams through her effective meditative recordings and online courses. So there's so much. Why don't we know about Victoria from her own words? So Victoria, please tell, how did you get into law of attraction? Yeah, thank you so much um, for introducing me. And I'd love to share, just dive right into that. So, you know, it, interestingly enough, uh, the other day I was just uh, taking a glance at one of the first books that I ever studied on personal development. And it was a book called Total Self-Confidence by Dr. Robert Anthony. And it's really interesting. I, I've been talking about this a little bit lately on um, my, my uh, Facebook profile, but I, I, I just opened the book. And in this book, I mean, it literally talks about the law of mental magnetism. It talks about like attracts like. And I'm not sure if he ever really used the term law of attraction in that book, but that book was a book that was given to me to, you know, overcome some challenges that I was having at that time in my life, um, by my mom, uh, to help me to, you know, to, to grow as a person and become more self-confident. And so that was about 19 years old. And that was in, you know, the late eighties <laughs> that I really, really started diving in and, and really understanding all of the mechanics about how the mind works, how your thoughts work, how visualization works, how to meditate, how to set goals, all of that. And so, um, you know, that, that was way before a lot of people started really learning about the law of attraction, which, you know, really picked up pace right around like 2006 with the, the great movie, the secret, I should say, it is a great movie. It's a great movie. Um, it's a lot, there's a lot of misunderstandings that people have gotten from that. And, you know, so it was after that, that I said, you know what, I, I, uh, I've been using this my whole life and it's heartbreaking sometimes to hear people get so disgruntled about the law of attraction and not being able to make it work or just thinking it's a bunch of, you know, BS and that kind of thing. So that's why I decided to, you know, really uh, to, to write a book and, you know, and to explain it from a little bit more of a practical standpoint, because, you know, really anybody can, can apply this material to them, their, their, their life. Um, and it just takes, uh, you know, it takes a little bit of, um, of, of understanding mm -hmm. and, um, and diligence and, 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 and practice. Okay. So, um, there, there are so many questions. So first, I know. Thing, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm more curious because, you know, this is the most, most misunderstood subject, unfortunately, Victoria. So that is the reason I reached out to you so that, you know, people get to know. And also, you know, some of the misconceptions are gone. And when experts like you come over and share your views and all that, it really helps. So 
uh, here is I, I got a really curious to know about your uh, ultimate weight loss power program, Victoria, because you know, yes, I heard a lot of people um, want to lose weight. So please, please, yes. So friends, that is ultimate weight loss power book. Uh, so please tell me more about that program, Victoria. Yeah. So, you know, I've been a hypnotherapist now since 1999. And when I first opened up my practice, that was primarily the, uh, you know, the, 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 you know, the majority of my clients were people who wanted to uh, lose weight. And I will tell you myself personally, that I have, um, you know, I, I did not come from a, a family that had uh, great genes as far mm -hmm. as weight loss, uh, you know, as far as weight goes. Um, I have people in my family, multiple people in my family that are um, more than, you know, 500 pounds. And um, yes. And, and so it's, it's been something for me that, you know, I've really had to, to work on and I've really had to work on, um, you know, my mindset. And, um, and so when, you know, people would come to me, there was just all of these different things that they, that you need to do all of these different habits. Cause I really, believe that weight, uh, it really just comes down to your habits, you know, your habit, your eating habits, your, uh, how you see yourself, the image that you carry in your mind, because a lot of times you can lose weight, but you still have the image of a fat person in your mind. You know, okay. you don't even necessarily even see the, the real image. Um, you know, just even drinking water, what we drink, what we put into our body, uh, exercising. So it broke, I broke it down to a series of, um, like, you know, 10 or 12 habits that a person needs to change within themselves. And I created this weekly program. So my clients would come and they would see me for about 10 weeks and each week, they would, uh, you know, implement a new habit. The very first week, it would just be really to, uh, to break down their goal and really to talk about where they, uh, where they want to see themselves. And, and also just to begin to help them to change some of the vocabulary, because, you know, you can go and you can get hypnotized and you can spend 25 minutes in a state of hypnosis and hear all the wonderful things. But then if you go out into the world and you start, yes you know, yammering on and on about how fat you are or how you love chocolate cake and you can't wait till you get off this diet to start totally. eating chocolate cake again. Well, guess what? You, you're, you're, re, you're continuing to program your mind all, all day long. So I would help people to go through all of these habits, learning how to speak to themselves, learning how to get into the exercise habit, learning to get in the water drinking habit, learning how to, you know, increase their metabolism, all of the things. And later on, because this was working so well for so many people, I created this script book that I would, um, you know, that, that I would offer to other hypnotherapists who could also use my program. And so I just sold that on my website for quite a number of years. I didn't actually have it turned into a book, uh, that I, you know, and until just a couple of years ago, I said, you know, I've been like, this has sort of been a little secret that I've been yeah. <laughs> keeping it's on my nice book. Uh, yeah. You know, so I, I, brushed it up. You know, there's a lot of, um, you know, a lot of things that I've even learned since then. Uh, and so I just brushed it up a little bit more and really put a lot of focus on it and then released it on, on Amazon. And so it has everything. This book has everything a non a layman or a actual certified hypnotist would need to know. I've got like the forms, it's got the questionnaires, it's got the scripts, it's, it's got everything. It's really, um, if I may say so myself, it is the best. <laughs> hypnotherapy book on this topic. Cause even if you don't want to do the 12, uh, session program with your clients, you could just pick one or two of the scripts in there. And you, you've got a script book, uh, you know, to help people, you know, to, to lose, to lose weight. So, uh, or to, you know, get into their ideal weight is what I teach people. <laughs> 
So uh, in, in this connection, little out of box question, Victoria. See, yeah. usually like, you know, coaches or therapists say, like, this is my secret. I, mm -hmm. I don't want to share with others. Yet, uh, how was your experience to give away so that other hypnotherapists, other uh, health professionals or anyone could imbibe your work into their work? So was it easy for you to let go in the form of book or like how could you? Because, you know, people think of competition and this and that. How freely you could mm -hmm. give away your secret? <laughs> So that? it so my I my philosophy on that whole thing is that the more people uh, that that become hypnotherapists, the more people will actually get the right information into their hands. So it's really my pleasure to give my gifts away. I'm not afraid of competition. I know that there's a lot of competition out there, but I really do try to. I really, I believe number one, I just come from abundance. I believe there's wow. enough business to, to go around. I mean, there's still so many people that I run into on a constant basis that don't even know really about the power of hypnosis. And so until like one in every four people <laughs> that I run into, like understands the power of hypnosis and has actually utilized it in their lives, in their own life. And I rarely come across anyone that actually uses hypnosis, you know, like, like, unless they're my clients, but I mean, people that you meet for the very first time, they're still out there saying, does that work? Does that really work? And so when we put this, when I put this gift into other hypnotherapists hands and help them to improve their skills, then they're doing this good work. And in a way it's like, I feel like, you know, I'm touching more, I'm yes. getting to touch the lives of more yes. people through them. So it just makes me feel really good. Amazing. Amazing. Love that. <sighs> Next one. Mm. One was weight loss because I, I told you in the initial there are a lot of questions to ask Victoria. <laughs> now yes. comes a uh, very interesting question, Victoria. Do really soulmates exist? Absolutely, absolutely. And um, so here's uh, here's Singles, my book. This please, is my please. most <laughs> yeah. So this is my most recent book, How to Manifest Your Soulmate Using the law of attraction. And I absolutely do believe that uh, soulmates exist. I maybe, uh, you know, have a different uh, attitude about soulmates in that, you know, I think you have many soulmates. I think you have many people that are meant to be on this on this life journey with you. Um, I've actually had, I I've met at least two of my soulmates. Um, you know, the first, uh, soulmate relationship that I really had, you know, I mean, it was just a really, really tender, special relationship, but he was really meant to teach me lessons that I would only learn once I had to let go of that relationship. And so it, uh, you know, I, I think that, we're meant to meet different people at different times in our lives that, uh, and it's not even just men and women that are soulmates uh, together. I mean, it's, and, it, and when I, and what I mean by that, I don't, I mean, it's not just um, re your love relationships. You can have soulmates. I think that are, that are, that are cats. You can have soulmates. Yes. Um, you not? know, there, it's not just for romantic relationships. You, you know, there, there are, um, those really, really special soul connections that you have with people that perhaps you, or creatures, you know, that you, that you've had from another life and you travel together through these soul groups and, and you meet again in, in when the time is right in, in different, in different ways and different times and different, different, uh, different lifetimes. Wow. So uh, thank you for clarifying, Victoria. Generally, whenever uh, we use this word soulmate, just a romantic relationship comes into the picture. So you have expanded that, including our pets also can be our soulmates. That's a beautiful. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yet, yet, still, I want to specifically ask questions on behalf of so many single people. Like they are, like you know, uh, have repetitive patterns of. Uh, 
attracting abusive partner or the one who are looking for the right um, uh, you know uh, life partner so does your book help singles who want to manifest the life partner as well because this is very specific question yes definitely so i was able to manifest my life partner um you know back in well it depends on how far back you go with our, when the beginning of a relationship started in 2004 um, oh. with my soulmate. Yeah. And 2004, uh, we met uh, for the first time in April on match.com. Now it was interestingly enough, because we weren't really meant to, uh, we didn't, we didn't really hit it off at that, at that time. It took about six months for us to, for the timing to really be right. So it was in a way it was like, sort of like we met too soon. And um, so everything, you know, really happened. We were in like the fall of, uh, of 2004, we ended up getting engaged in 2007 and then getting married in 2008. So now we've been together for about uh, 13 years. And there was a little bit of a weird up and down uh, with that, but He's definitely my soulmate and it's, it's really, it's really just an amazing, um, relationship. So my book, um, part, part of it is like my story in my journey in, in finding my own soulmate and really I like sitting down and, and asking myself these important questions, like what did I do and really walking myself back, you know? to what, what was my process? What are the, the parts of my process that I can share with other people to help them um, to speed up the time so that they don't have to wait as long as, as you know, that it, it, it took me because so much of, of why it took me so long is not knowing yes. what I'm going to share with people in this book. So you know, it took me probably a, a period of, from beginning to look, you know, to, to actually finding my soulmate, you know, a good four to six years, just kind of oh. depending on, yeah. And, you know, this can really speed up the process. And one of the things that I, that I really teach people is, is about like really making up with the past, you know, and, and that was a big, big part of what held me back for so long was, you know, still kind of clinging to a past relationship and really not know, you know, so, so there's a lot of life lessons in here that I teach that will really help to speed up that, that process. And, you know, help somebody to like really get clear on what it is that they're looking for, how to know when you've actually found that person, because there's a lot of what I call soulmate imposters out there that are not really your soulmate, but they're imposters. They don't mean to be imposters, but you know, it's, it's kind of like you miss, it's like a mistaken identity and you think that that person's your soulmate, but they're really, they're really not. And so I teach all of that, what to look for, how to, you know, how to go about it. And it's, it's, you know, it's really uh, going to help a lot of people to, uh, you know, to, to find and, ma and marry their soulmate. Yes. Excellent. Because, you know, Victoria, I have had this experience that, you know, people research some 10, 15 books and write a random book, but this is the book evolved out of your experience. That's amazing. So yeah. that, you know, yeah, a, a book born out of experience gives more value, Victoria. I, I believe that. It's not just, you know, you, you pick up from a few books and just recycle the same information doesn't really help. So this book. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's, that's how, you know, I, I don't want to write about anything that I haven't really um, experienced or done myself. Like the, my writings are always about something that like, is important to me and that, you know, um, that, that I've had personal life experience with. And so I totally agree with you that, you know, you know, some people, I mean, they've, you know, they've written many, 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 many books. And how much of that is really based on personal experience. And um, here is one more uh, question about uh, law of attraction, mm -hmm. uh, Victoria. Before we go that, before I go into a uh, 
few more concepts of law of attraction could you please share about the other books that you have authored uh, Victoria we would like to have our plans so that- yes yes absolutely so i have my uh my attract good luck book okay and <laughs> this say, is I'm not about lucky, i'm not lucky often so yeah please tell more about that book Yes. So, so this is a book on, you know, really learning how to get control over your life. It's a, it's a book on awareness. Uh, It really, uh, so much of the process really begins with, uh, you know, being present to your level of awareness that you have right now, because, you know, it's, it's really interesting. We all have the ability to, uh, to be lucky. I mean, luck is really just taking action on the opportunities that are presented uh, to you at any one time um, that turn out to be a lucky situation. But, you know, oftentimes, you know, we will, you know, we'll, we'll tell ourselves that I'm not, a, I'm not the person who wins. I'm not the, a very lucky person. I have all the bad luck. That person has yeah. so much luck. Why don't yes. I have it? And so much of it is, is just, it, you know, it begins with our, our vocabulary and the things that we're saying t- to ourselves. Um, you know, and so we, we have these limiting beliefs that tell us that like, we're not very lucky people. So this book really goes into a lot of, it's, it's really a workbook in an, wow. in a way it's, it's actually a workbook that you walk through and that you answer questions and you begin to, um, you know, stop feeling like a victim and start to take personal responsibility for changing your luck in your life. If you want to be lucky, you absolutely can. And it, you know, it, it just really starts with retraining the way that we see things, opening up our awareness to the possibility. There's so many things that like, we just don't even see every, all the data that's, that's all around us. Um, our brain like filters things out based on our belief system. And so whatever it is that we're expecting is what we ultimately create in our lives. So if we expect to have good luck and in a real way, and we can really break through and really, um, you know, believe and hone these skills. Cause it, in a way it's like, I teach it like good luck is a skill. It's like you can wow. manufacture, you can manufacture creating more luck in your life um, by just kind of like shifting your awareness and knowing what to look for and being more present and being more grateful uh, for the things that we do have. Sometimes, you know, we're just so busy looking ahead and or looking behind, looking at what didn't happen that was supposed to happen or what did happen that you didn't like, or, you know, looking in the, but we're not even present to what's going on right now that we have so much good fortune already in our lives. And when we are grateful, when we look at this present moment and the things that we've already, guess what? We're going to be rewarded with more of the same. Um, But if we're complaining all the time and thinking, oh, I have all, guess what? We're going to we're going to, you know, see more of the same of that. So it just, it kind of depends on what you want to look at and what, whatever you look at, um, you're going to create more of that. Wow. I, I love the sentence when you said luck is just a skill that we mm-hmm. can develop. And, and that to your book uh, is designed in the form of a workbook. So we can go really deep into it. Yeah, it very much is, you know, that's kind of, that's kind of been how I write. I mean, there's always a little work to do <laughs> in my books. <laughs> I don't like to just, and read and read. yeah, I, you know, that's just kind of, it seems to be like that. That's how I write. I always like to, um, you know, well, how, how do you do this? Well, here's, here's how you do it and let's go ahead and do it. (laughs) So it's very much a coaching exercise. When you, when you read a book by Victoria Gallagher, it's going to, you know, you're, you're going to have to do something. (laughs) And I always put the exercises in there to, uh, you know, to get you to, to move and take action toward whatever it is that you want. 
anything else any other books you want to share um oh yes yes so here's my um this is my award winning um you can see the little little award back there yes. that i got um you know from uh, dr That's richard nongard uh <laughs> yes <laughs> And uh, so this is my award-winning book. Um, this was, you know, really kind of my claim to fame. Victoria, uh, could you book. please bring it a little closer? Yeah, practical law of attraction. Yeah. <laughs> because I want people to and, see that. Uh, and know, also it was- Practical. <laughs> <laughs> Pract yes, that is the key word in here, practical. Uh, because, you know, so, so many people have this concept of the law of attraction like, all that you have to do is think about what you want long enough and the object of your thought is going to appear you you hear constantly thoughts become things and while thoughts do become things there's a there's a lot more between the thought and the thing you know before the thought can actually become a thing it's got to go through an energetic process and that energetic process means that ultimately like you know you've got to get these thoughts really clear you've got to get them focused um you've got to you know have this got to be something like that you have a feeling about that's gonna that makes you feel good if you're feeling like you just want something because you resent not having it, you know, which is where a lot of people come from. It's like, oh, I, you know, where's my stuff already? And they're thinking in a negative way or they're feeling negative that that's going to create resistance. Um, what are you visualizing? What is the, you know, getting the evoking the imagination? The imagination is about the most powerful part of our brain and you know and the imagination can i mean can create all kinds of things but what does it create again it doesn't just create the reality to just poof you know um and things magically appear the way it really works in reality is that you know you begin with a desire you get that desire clear you get your vision clear and then you get ideas ideas you get intuition you get insight this comes uh you know to you through believing in in what it is that you want this comes to you through uh, through the imagination and the imagination will give you those uh you know those those in inspirations to act on and of course you know you have to take some sort of of action in order to create what what you want you have this relationship ultimately uh between the the super conscious the infinite intelligence that's giving you these ideas yes. and and you taking action on those ideas and when you collaborate and you take these actions on these ideas guess what you're going to get more ideas and you're going to manifest the results that you're working towards so it's a very you know i mean i i've fed through that that process and you know that's there's my eight manifesting conditions in this book okay. and all these conditions ultimately need to be synchronized in harmony and 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 strengthened and worked on you know you may have it perfectly like that you're you know you're thinking maybe great but maybe what you're imagining isn't so great or maybe the mm -hmm. subconscious beliefs are not in alignment so it's like we're taking a look at where are you out of alignment getting yourself into alignment with that and once you're in alignment that's when the things will start to manifest for you wow that's the reason it is practical LOA program. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Any upcoming books or anything else? Like what, what's running new in the Victoria's mind, please? <laughs> yeah. So, um, so I do have a, a couple of books that are like, uh, like either, you know, I, I have, I always have like a few works that like need to be improved upon. Okay. And so one of those works that needs to be improved upon that'll eventually get released is my, um, I, my book of a thousand powerful law of attraction, 
um, affirmations. And these are on like 40 different areas in your life. So, you know, I, I may be um, expanding on that. Another one is uh, some uh, meditations for personal growth. So I'm looking at, I have about 50 or so different um, meditations for personal growth that I'm working on. And then another book that I am starting to break ground on is called uh, Law of Detachment. And oh, that one, I think that's going to be like, I, I, yeah. And I, I'm also wanting to work on a book for um, law of attraction for, uh, you know, business success for the wow. entrepreneur. Yeah. So, so those are a few ideas that are in the background. I, I definitely see one or two books coming down the pike, you know, in two, 2022, probably not going to happen before the end of this year, 2021, but definitely I see uh, some more good stuff. Yeah. It's going to be about a book a year. And that's what yes. I've been doing for the last four years now. Okay. And um, Victoria, um, when I was exploring your website, oh my God, you have so many downloadable hypnotherapy programs for different aspects of life. So uh, please tell me like when we uh, listen to a specific program, let's say about uh, um, overcoming anxiety or for money or there could be like, I've created so many programs and the list was like, oh my God, the list was unending. It was going on. Hundreds and, on. and hundreds. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so uh, let's say I have chosen one specific audio and I keep listening to it, whether I believe it or not. Yet over a period, does that work? Like how, how do these self-hypnosis programs that you have created help? So how they help, and you know, these are really are helpful with the law of attraction. And just by the way, one other thing is that um, you know, you can uh, get access to all of these through just one app uh, that you can download on your phone. And this one app will actually unlock all of my, uh, you know, hypnosis. I mean, tens of thousands of dollars worth of material in this one app. But um, so it really begins by, you know, having taking one goal that you have on, you know, really starts with having one goal and then looking for the appropriate hypnosis session that will help you uh, with that goal. Um, listening to that same session in a, you know, hypnotic state, when I say in a hypnotic state, this hypnotic state is, is a state that is between waking and sleeping. It's not sleep and you're not wide awake. You feel very relaxed and your brain waves are in a state called theta and theta is is where the mind just opens up to the suggestions that are in this program and absorbs them into the subconscious mind um, ultimately, you know, when, when I, you know, I always have people do a little work, like you say, like I say, you know, it's not just sitting there and, and taking the information and relaxing, but I have you do little exercises in your mind to, um, ultimately, because the brain, the subconscious doesn't know the difference between what's real and what you're imagining. And so it has to create the outcome. If you continue to imagine yourself in this situation, and that doesn't necessarily mean visualize could mean that you you're hearing something. You could mean that you're feeling something, but you know, you are reprogramming the subconscious mind to give you these new insights, these new behaviors, this new way of being, because it's all about reinventing yourself, you know, like, like the person who has this behavior that you want to get rid of, or the person who is creating a new behavior that is going to take them into successful places in their life. You do that through retraining the thought patterns that are in the subconscious mind. And it's those patterns, those subconscious patterns, that's going to get you moving into the, the new direction is going to, it's in a way, you know, again, it's like law of attraction. You're going to get new ideas on like what you need to you know, what you need to do to move in this direction. 
um, you know, or if it's just as simple as, you know, quitting smoking or losing weight, it's going to help you to retrain your, your brain that like, when I feel, uh, you know, when I feel, uh, when I think I feel hungry, but I'm just really bored, you know, then I am, you know, I'm going to go for a walk instead. And, you know, it's like kind of retraining you to go in this new direction. Or, you know, if you when you feel like putting the cigarette in your mouth, you know, it's like, well, you know, it's going to help you to do something that is healthier for you instead, like drinking a glass of water. The same thing for entrepreneurs, you know, when the entrepreneur says, you know what, it's, uh, three o'clock and I'm tired and I know I'm out of creative ideas. And it's like, no, all you need to do is just re-anchor yourself to this new way that you want to feel and get the motivation and get the creativity and get the inspiration. And, you know, so it does all of those things, but you gotta like be, you know, you gotta be willing to listen to it yes. uh, for long enough uh, for sure. it to, you know, to take, firm hold, you know, not just one time, but like yes. a good, you know, 21 to 30 days or longer, uh, depending on, you know, how stubborn those programs are. Sometimes they can be a little, little pesky and a little stubborn, but they will eventually change. True. Wow. Uh, uh, perhaps this is the um, uh, one more important questions, Victoria, I have been longing to ask you. What are the general mistakes people do while practicing law of attraction? Oh, that is such a such a wonderful question. So, the probably the biggest mistakes that uh, that people make, I want to say, uh, number one is giving up too soon. Uh, that's probably the, okay. that's probably like the, like the number one thing people do is like expecting something to happen overnight or in a week, or, you know, even just putting any kind of a date on things, um, has a tendency, has a tendency to create a little bit of resistance. And so, um, even I, I'm not saying you can't put a date on it. You can, as long as it's not giving you fear and anxiety oh. and, and, and doubt and making you feel bad about it. If, if any of that is, if, if, if the date is giving you those feelings, then you just got to get rid of the date and realize, you know what, I'm just committed to having this in my life at some point, no matter what. And then once you have released that fear, doubt, and anxiety in the dates, then you're able to, uh, you know, you're just able to feel better and just feel excited and, and really know that it's coming. And, um, and so, you know, and that all just kind of ties also in with just being too attached to, um, to, to the, how it's going to show up. We don't always know. And almost every single thing that I've ever manifested in my life, it just came about in such a completely different way than I imagined that it was going to come. And usually Usually the thing is, is that whatever um, I've manifested, it almost always comes after there's a little setback. There's always like a couple of months prior to something big manifesting in my life. There's always been a little like what seems to be a little setback, but that setback was necessary because it was designed to get whatever was there out of the way so that you could replace that with the thing that you are uh, desiring to manifest. So, um, you know, so really just letting go of the how, uh, and, and so you know, that's probably one of the biggest things is people get hung up on the yes. how and the when. And when. so uh, with, with that said, um, you know, just, you want to detach and that's hence the, the new book that I'm thinking about. It's so much about detachment. <laughs> so true. And, and uh, one of the uh, frequent um, complaints I hear from some of my clients as well as most of the friends and across whoever is exploring law of attraction, Victoria, uh, I'm, I'm not good at visualization. I cannot visualize. Mm, I'm yes. very poor at visualization. So could you please uh, clarify uh, the question or some offer some tips around the visualization part? 
Yes, absolutely. So first of all, it really starts off with um, people have like an, an expectation of what it's like to visualize. A lot of times when people think that they're not visual, they think that they're not visual because they can't like consistently see these crystal clear holographic 3D, Im, you know, yeah. images in, in their brain. And if they can't do that, then I'm not visual. Mm -hmm. And so they automatic, so, so then they perpetuate this whole idea of not being visual because they say, I'm, I'm just not very visual. And so they don't even try. And, you know, so, so it really, you know, I want to back up to starting to become, you know, some people are a little bit more naturally visual than others. As a matter of fact, something like 60% of people are naturally visual and, uh, and the rest of the, you know, the 40% are not naturally visual and they rely on maybe some other sense, like maybe a feel, maybe they feel things a little bit more or they hear things a little bit more. So you have your kinesthetic, your auditory and your visual senses. Um, you also have your olfactory and your, um, uh, the sense of smell as well. Um, but you, those are the main uh, ways. So if you, if you just like, if it's impossible, like if you really feel like it's impossible for you to visualize, then you can use one of your other senses to imagine. And, and, you know, I use these words, visualize and imagine very interchangeably. So when I suggest to somebody to visualize, I also mean sense it in some way with some other sense. Now, getting back to like, you know, I, I do believe that most people have the ability to, uh, to visualize and it's a great skill to develop. And so you can develop your skill by just simply working at it a little bit, like just literally think about like, look at your hand, you know, look at your hand and try to memorize what does your hand look like? And then close your eyes and see if you can see all the little lines and where they were, or even like just something as basic as a circle, you know, like literally just look, draw a circle and then look at that circle on the page piece of paper that you drew and then close your eyes and see if you can remember. Cause it's really in a way it's like kind of remembering is it getting access to a memory of what something looked like. And another thing too, when you think about visualizing, like think about your dreams, like think about when you're, when you're dreaming, like, aren't you normally like seeing something in your dream. So if you are seeing something in your dream, then you're, you know, then, then you're visualizing you're ultimately yes. you're, you're seeing something. And so, um, so you just start to, you know, really incorporate and practice and, and, and get into, um, you know, get into, uh, some starting with some very simple things to look at and then start to look at more complicated things. And then you can take it from where you are right now in your present moment to like start to see something in, in the future uh, happening. And, um, you know, and it, it, it's just really, it just takes practice. Amazing. And uh, one more um, very bothering thing for the law of attraction practitioners, uh, Victoria, limiting beliefs. Uh, could you please give some tips on how one can change their limiting beliefs? Like, I'm not lucky, you know, like even let's take your example. Ah, Victoria could have been lucky to write all these books. She's, she's lucky, so she's, she's where she is. But mm, there is a process. You have done a lot of things to be where you are. So it is very easy to compare with others and then say, uh, I'm, I'm not lucky, I'm single, I can't find a good partner, making money is hard and the list goes on and on and on. So uh, could you please offer some tips to my audience on how to change limiting beliefs? Yes, absolutely. So even before getting into diving into hypnosis, which is so powerful for, uh, you know, changing the limiting beliefs is really, it's about the discovery of what those limiting beliefs are. So take a goal that you want to achieve or something that you want to manifest. So you want to 
you know, think about what that is first. Then as you say to yourself, I am manifesting whatever it is, you know, I'm manifesting, a, um, you know, six figure income or seven figure income, or, you know, I'm manifesting a new relationship, right? And so, so you put that goal down and you are going to like um, hear, like, what are your excuses for why you don't have that right now or why you can't create that? So like literally ask yourself, like, what is getting in my way of creating this right now? Well, I don't have enough time. Well, I don't know enough people. Well, there's nobody. I'm not good enough. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not smart enough. Da, 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 da. You're going to hear these excuses um, as to why you don't have that thing. You want to write all all of those excuses down because those excuses, any of those complaints, any of those expressions that are coming out as to why you don't have it, those are your limiting beliefs. And so it's a discovery of what those limiting beliefs are to begin with. Once you have uh, an awareness and you've discovered what those limiting beliefs are, then you can actually work on them one by one. And you literally just take each one and you ask yourself, what do I want to, you know, well, be even before you ask yourself, like, what do you want to believe instead? You can actually start to dismantle some of those, um, those and disarm some of those limiting be beliefs by just simply kind of like, um, interrogating that belief. Well, where did you learn that from? Who did you learn that from? What, you know, is, is this true for everyone? Is this, uh, you know, has this always been true? So you want to just like ask yourself a few questions or ask that belief a few questions. And you're going to find that oftentimes these you know, these limits, there's, you know, they, they don't make any sense to you anymore. They were something maybe that you heard somebody else say a long time ago when you were a kid and, or you might've heard it on TV or you heard one of your friends say it. And so you can all of a sudden, like you realize that doesn't even make any sense anymore. So now that you've disproven that belief and you've sort of uh, like put it on the stand, now you can come up with a new belief that you'd like to believe instead. So what would I like to believe about this instead? Oh, you know, it's easy to, uh, you know, create a, I, I want to believe that it's easy to create a, yeah. a seven figure a year income. Okay. So then, you, you know, you create a bunch of affirmations and suggestions that will support that belief. And that's how you speak to yourself from now on. Amazing. <clears throat> When, when we set a goal and think about it, that's when all these excuses. I know uh, what I like this, our excuses or our limiting beliefs was a major insight, I should say. And then, you know, uh, also I, I like your tip on interrogating those excuses. Yes. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So sometimes, you know, uh, what Cause we think, think about it when you, when, you know, yeah. when, when somebody's interrogating and questioning you, you start to doubt, yeah. you start to doubt is, is that, is that really true? You know? And so that's what you're doing with that belief. It's like, gosh, is that, is that really true? I've been believe I've believed, believe this my whole life, but now I'm really questioning and putting this belief on the stand, <laughs> you know? it starts to question itself. That is very, uh, you know, uh, your tips on visualization and changing limiting beliefs are amazing, Victoria. Uh, Victoria, probably a last question uh, for this. And I'm more curious also, Victoria, now world knows you as a coach, as a hypnotherapist, as a law of attraction pioneer, as an author and all that. That is, let's say this is now. And there was once a time who didn't know much about law of attraction or anything else. So where many people are here and, and Victoria who is now all these things, author, coach, you name, I don't know what all like you are into most of the things and all that. So what <laughs> is your secret of success in the transitioning from uh, the the point A to point B. 
what what all did you do as a friend to become who you are right now you know i think it really started with an awareness of awareness. it really started with an awareness of um you know that i wasn't satisfied with where i was at at the time like i could have stopped i was a successful stockbroker at the mm -hmm. time um that i you know uh really just had this new awareness. And I, I realized I just, I wasn't feeling very passionate about where I was at. And, um, and so I started to take classes. I started to take uh, seminars and, mm -hmm. and these seminars introduced me, reintroduced me to a lot of these profound ideas and techniques and and person, the whole world of personal development. And I just, I knew, I didn't know how, but I knew that I wanted to, I wanted to be that person that was inspiring me. Like, so I was that, you know, I was where you're saying where I am now or where, I, you know, the other person is, I was in that seat. I was a person being inspired and saying, Oh, you know, I want to, I want to be that person. I want to be like them inspiring other people. And, um, and literally I just, um, you know, I was stubborn and <laughs> I, I knew what I wanted and I would not stop until, until I got there. And I still wow. have goals that I'm very stubborn about achieving that I will not stop until I get. And so uh, to me, it's like this determination and this awareness and this profound level of, for me, determination and persistence and, you know, and, and there's like, there's just not even a bone in my body that would ever, like, there's no give up in me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> stubborn. <laughs> that's a beautiful word see generally that in, in the initial um, in when when you are talking about weight loss program and other programs you also mentioned about the vocabulary the stubbornness mm -hmm. usually use uh, you know mentioned in a negative context but still mm -hmm. see how beautifully you have uh, turned the perspective towards the word stubborn Yes. Yes. Wow. It can be a, it can be a negative word for sure. It can, it can work for you or it can work against you. Depends and sometimes it does it. work against me. You know, I mean, sometimes, you know, having late night <laughs> arguments with, you know, the hubby, it's like, you know, we're both pretty stubborn and in that regard, you know, sometimes it can work against you, but you know, it's also been the thing that's we've been very stubborn about making it work and and sticking together and making sure that we build and grow and and have a wonderful you know life together so you know it stubbornness it it's however you uh you know you can have a negative connection or a positive connection with it um i, I want to close this interview with a silly question as well victoria so what Absolutely. is your answer? What is your answer to the people who think, okay, uh, becoming successful or being an author or this recognition that you're enjoying was written in the fate of Victoria. It's oh. all in the fate. If Victoria is destined, hence she's reaping all these benefits. Because why am I asking this question is not just about you, Victoria, in day-to-day -day life, uh, people tend to compare with their friends, colleagues, and others, and then like uh, they are destined. It's there. It's it was there in their fate and all that. So I just summarized those day-to-day -day situations and turned this question towards you, so that so like are you about destined fate or like your stubbornness, your determination, and you work towards it? So could you please elaborate a little bit? on that yeah you know that's a really good question i i kind of go both i honestly i kind of go both ways because um on the one hand i do believe that we we're given free will and we can choose whatever life we want to choose for ourselves and that you know on on the one hand like you know is our destiny already pre-designed for us 
And on the other hand, uh, you know, I, I do kind of feel like the destiny there, there is something, there's a seed that we planted within ourselves before we came into these bodies, before we came into this, this, you know, being, and we, if we listen, we can find that. And, and it is the highest form of our desire. It is what we really want. We, we confuse it with our own personal desire. Um, and sometimes, you know, and, and, but we have to grow into the person like that, that destiny, finding that destiny and, uh, and, and stepping into, we have to step into the person who we were meant to become in this lifetime in order to fulfill that destiny. And we can choose to do that, or we can choose to kind of ignore that and we can still live a happy life, but we're not going to become all that we were meant to be unless we step into the shoes of the person who's meant to fulfill that destiny. Thank you. Uh, that was a beautiful explanation. You did not uh, deny anything and you beautifully made it everything into fit into a single frame. <laughs> that was awesome. So oh, thank, thank you, you so much. very much, Victoria. It was lovely talking to you. And you uh, too. Um, wonderful uh, series of books that you have written and uh, amazing books that are lined up to, uh, you know, to be written and you know, gifting uh, these books as a gift to the world, really. You, uh, you know, teachers like you are more required who teach out of experience, Victoria. That kind of uh, teachings are more required so that people can relate to, understand, believe, and all these misconceptions around this beautiful subject, law of attraction are gone and uh, people start using it uh, more and more to make their lives better. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you for, you know, sharing all of this amazing information with your audience. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, more people need to, uh, you know, share this information. And uh, so thank you so much for giving me the opportunity. Thank you.